Hi there. Let's go through the rubric to how this 2014 investigative task, the number six question on the AP Statistics Free Response exam, was graded. So part A, you had to give and calculate the residual, but you had to give supporting work. At the very least, you have to show the subtraction problem, actual minus predicted for where the residual is coming from. But then don't forget, you have to interpret it in context. And that interpretation had to include two components. You had to give a direction. So is it an under prediction or is it an over prediction? And you have to describe, is it an under or an over prediction of what? You actually had to give the magnitude in that interpretation. So there are two components. There's a calculation. And there is the supporting interpretation. in context. Something to think about. Let's say you had the order opposite in the calculation of the residual, so you got a negative instead of a positive residual. Well, as long as you were consistent in your interpretation, then you would have an over prediction. So as long as you're consistent in the interpretation, you won't get credit for the residual, but you can still get the credit for the interpretation. So, and notice you did not have to get 0.95 depending on how many decimal places you may have maintained from the regression when you substituted in the 175. You could get slightly different answers here. That's why it's important to show your work. So an essentially correct answer has a calculation with work and an interpretation that includes the direction and it includes the magnitude. So a partially correct answer would include only one of these two components. So the calculation of the residual with work or the interpretation. So an incorrect answer would mean both of these were not completed. So for part B, literally an essentially correct answer again has two components. You have to circle the right value in the graph and then you have to explain this point B near zero, what does that residual of approximately zero mean in context? And in context, you have to be talking about um, why the residual is zero, what that means in terms of the actual and predicted FCR, that prediction based on length. So you have to circle, and then you have to interpret. you're interpreting point B. So if you do both of those, it's an essentially correct answer. If you complete only one of the two, it is a partially correct answer. Otherwise, the answer is incorrect. Part C, this is where you were comparing the associations in the two graphs. So first of all, your comparisons for the first component, they had to include a description of form and direction. So those were combined together, form and direction. That's one component. So notice here, I'm talking about in my answer, a positive direction in uh, graph number two versus not much of a direction in graph number three. I'm talking about a linear form in graph number two versus not much of a form in graph number three is something to think about in terms of the form to get credit for this component you had to use the word linear so second component you should describe the strength of the association for both graphs so you had to describe strength and that's important because strength bears directly on the last part of the question and then last you had to compare between the two graphs. So notice here is my strength component and throughout this answer I am being explicit about comparing between the two graphs. So an essentially correct answer has all three of these components. A partially correct answer would include only two of these three components. 
and then an incorrect answer would include only one or none of these components. So notice something interesting, if really all you had done was to compare the, uh, the strengths between the two graphs, you could get a partially correct answer, and that's because in part D, that comparison of strength is really the key to explaining what's going on in part D. So notice, just like we've talked about many times in class, scatter plots, direction, form, strength, and comparison, you have to use explicitly terms that involve comparison. So that's something we've talked about many times. So last, in part D of the question, an essentially correct answer, you must choose engine size, first of all. So if you do not choose engine size, if instead you choose the other alternative, that was wheelbase. If you choose wheelbase, no matter what you wrote, this component is incorrect. So if you choose engine size, then in order to get an essentially correct answer, there are two parts that you have to discuss. First of all, you have to connect it to back, back to part C, and you have to note that engine size is the stronger association with the original residuals using length. So it is the stronger association. And because it is the stronger association, the second component, you can use then this variable to help reduce the variability that remains unexplained, the variability in the residuals that remains unexplained. So you can use this to reduce the variability. the variability in the residuals that remains unexplained after the original regression of fuel consumption rate on length. So you must choose engine size. If you choose wheelbase instead, if you choose wheelbase instead, this answer is incorrect no matter what you include. So if you choose engine size, an essentially correct answer includes both of these components. It's the stronger association and it can be used to reduce the variability that remains in the residuals from the original regression. If you only include one of these two components, discussing that it's the stronger association, but you still have to choose engine size. If you're discussing that it's the stronger association, but you don't connect that to the variability in the residuals, it's a partially correct answer. Or if you talk about the variability without justifying this by explaining it's the stronger association, it's a partially correct answer. Otherwise, if you choose engine size, but you don't include either of these components, it's an incorrect answer. So understand there are four E, P's, or I's that you can earn on this question. So the rubric was a little simpler then because every E represented one point. Every P represented one half of a point. So like I've discussed a number of times in class, to pass the AP exam in statistics, you really do need to get points on the number six question because it is worth so much in terms of your score. But folks, there are some easy points to get here. Notice, as an example, in part A, if all you did was calculate the residual, even if you forgot to interpret it, if all you did was calculate it, you still have a partially correct answer. Notice in part B, if you did not interpret B correctly. So if you did not interpret point B correctly or you didn't interpret it in context using FCR, at the very least, if you circled the correct point for component B, you also have a partially correct answer. So right there, you have two P's. Each of those is a half of a point. That makes one out of the four points on this number six question. And to earn more points, the key is thinking in context. So doing your interpretation from part E in context, talking about FCR. In part B, talking about what this residual that's close to zero means, but interpreting it in context. Part C, when you talk about the direction and the form and the strength and the comparison, make sure you're talking about the two graphs and what those graphs represent. And then finally, in part D, you must write in 
terms of context. You must specifically choose engine size. You have to talk about how it's more strongly associated to the residuals, or it could reduce the variability in those residuals from the original regression. Writing in context is a really important characteristic because also notice that based on this rubric, E's being one point, P's being a half of a point, it is possible to get, for instance, one and a half points or two and a half points on this question. Then the question is scored up either, let's say you had a two and a half. It is scored up to a three or down to a two holistically. So you can't get half of a points on a question. So it will be scored up to a three or down to a two holistically. Holistically, then they will go back and look at how well you are communicating in particular. Are you communicating in context? Are you using the vocabulary accurately? So these are the kinds of things that are important when it comes to deciding will your question be scored up or down from half points based on that holistic approach. But overall, if you look at the rubric, there are points to be had here that don't require a lot of work. So it's really important that you start any number six investigative task by reading the question carefully, making sure you understand the context, and then diving into the parts that you feel confident about. Don't be afraid to write about the parts that you are uncertain about. It's so important to try here. There are lots of points, and there's lots of partial credit.